Thanks for getting on to the Monday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Did you enjoy the live stream yesterday? I hope you were able to tune in. I certainly did enjoy it. Eventually got there, albeit it was probably close to a half an hour late. I did prepare um, or what I thought was preparation, only to find that uh, I kind of screwed things up at the very last minute that caused quite a delay in the live stream. But uh, let me know in the comment section below, did you enjoy yesterday's live stream? Are you enjoying these global weather reports on a live stream on a Sunday afternoon? I hope you are. Uh, you could be saying to yourself that the weather's starting to get a little bit boring. I'm going to kind of drift off and I'll come back in late autumn, early winter. But there is plenty of reason to stick around here on marfoganweather.com because we're going to be looking at the prospects of the La Nina developing. What influence that may have on the atmosphere, both locally as well as globally. Are we going to see a hot summer coming up this year? All these things are going to be discussed right here on YouTube in the coming days and weeks to come. So stay tuned, like, share and subscribe and then um, stick around because there is plenty of reasons to stick around here on the channel. I do greatly appreciate each and everybody's support and um, coming up this upcoming Sunday, I will have edition 84 of the Global Weather Report live right here from Mark Vogan Weather HQ in Edmonton, Russia. So like I said in yesterday's video, uh, we are expecting to see the demise of the El Nino and the rise of La Nina 2024, I think is going to be the case. There's no guarantees, obviously. But you notice here for the month of May, seen by the, the CFSV2, we're starting to see that ribbon of colder than average waters. Look at how warm the Atlantic is. And this is a concern with regards to the Atlantic hurricane season. I'm going to try and do a, an Atlantic hurricane season forecast this year. I've not done one in a few years. I did used to do hurricane forecasts away back in the day. But I'm going to try and maybe do one this year. But you notice here, as we progress into the summertime, those warm waters, um, you know, arguably seen by the CFSV2, are very, very warm up across the far north Atlantic here. What influence will that have on rainfall distribution? The Irmas, the 500 millibar pattern, we will look at that in the coming weeks to come. And then at the end of May, I will have my 2024 summer forecast um, due for release but I'm only now starting to build the ideas and I, I'm likely building into the equation a developing La Nina this upcoming summer season and then it looks as if the model um, has it peaking in intensity towards the October November time frame but one thing that's quite interesting to see is you notice it's looking a bit of a Madoki style La Nina um, with a kind of central Pacific based position of that cold and average waters and like i said yesterday i think a, a strong el nino or a strong la nina has a detrimental impact in terms of cold winters for both north america as well as europe so we'll wait and see what happens um as we go uh, through the next few weeks this is the current temperatures as of uh, five uh, or just after 5 p.m uk time and we've got a fairly mild regime across pretty much all of the continent. Yeah, you've got slightly below average uh, temperatures, perhaps up towards Scandinavia, but it's early March. You would, uh, th this isn't particularly cold uh, by any stretch. Uh, temperatures this morning dropped are reasonably cold, actually. This is the, the uh, continent, not overly cold, but if you look at the UK specifically, we had a few fairly cold spots during the overnight last night, minus fives, even minus sixes. We had uh, temperatures uh, well below freezing all the way down to the south coast of uh, of England, as you can see, um, a little bit milder across the southwest of uh, the Republic of Ireland, but uh, once you headed further north, temperatures were uh, that bit colder. So obviously, despite the fact that days are growing longer, the sun's growing stronger, we still have cold nights under clear skies and light winds. And if we look at uh, the CFSV2 in terms of the temperature anomaly, for the next wee while here i'm gonna uh, bear with me a second because i've not actually checked it's probably in the process of uh, of loading the new run and uh, therefore i'm 
going to struggle perhaps to show you the temperature on my chart. Let's have a look and see. The upcoming seven day period is drier than average. And I'll show you that in just a second the reason for that. Wetter than average conditions, southern portions of France into Iberia. Uh, but you notice here central and northern Europe fir firmly drier than average. Temperature anomaly wise, this is the upcoming uh, five day period. And you can see that we are slightly warmer than average. So this is what I was saying. Despite the fact that we've got blocking, it's a bit of a waste of a good block. When without cold air over the central portions of Europe with Scandinavian high to the north, you don't have any cold air coming in from the east. That could change as we progress towards the middle portion of the month. We'll wait and see what happens. Certainly the day four through eight suggests that average conditions, but still above average, seen by the GFS ensemble. Uh, the period between the 7th and the 12th of March, which is getting towards the middle portion of the month. Now, like I've said in the, the March outlook, it wouldn't surprise me if we get a response to strengthening high pressure over northwest Africa, the Azores, southern portions of, uh, uh, of Europe. And if that can build northwards, we could see an end of March spell of warmer than average weather, even a taste of early summer. That is not out of the realm of possibility, given the circumstances that we have in place. But if we look at the, the weather charts uh, website here, this is the overview of the GFS. And you can see that area of high pressure over Scandinavia. We've got a feature at 980 millibars, uh, edging into the southwest of Ireland here. We've got a frontal system associated with that uh, notice here how it breaks up quite readily as it bumps into higher pressure to the east so as we continue to play through the loop you notice here that we've got areas of low pressure over the atlantic it's getting deflected uh, back westwards because of the strengthening of the high over scandinavia now you're saying to yourself that looks like a reasonably cold run but like i've already emphasized without the colder in place you're not getting a cold easterly wind because if you look at the uh, 850 temperature chart here of the the gfs you can see that uh, we've got a marginally colder uh, riding in underneath that area of high pressure but i'm not entirely convinced that it's going to respond much to the lower levels of the atmosphere so therefore the only thing that we could maybe su suggest would be with clear skies and light winds the temperatures drop below freezing during the overnight period but with sunny skies during the day you're going to see the temperatures respond in that early march sunshine and as we continue to play through the loop you notice here that cold air is continuously getting uh, deflected away from the uk then we appear to open up the floodgates they open up the door to the atlantic once again we'll go back to the overview chart you can see that we've got areas of low pressure as the jet stream starts to fire up over the atlantic then it's going to weaken the area of high pressure up over scandinavia and in comes a more active period of weather towards the middle portion of the month we're going to get gaps in between so we're going to get a reprieve in between these areas of low pressure but nonetheless it looks as if we've got a rather if I'm being honest, monotonous pattern. I strive here in the channel to be as open and honest with you as possible rather than hype cast, clickbait. It's not about that. It's about delivering accurate information and something that you can go by without it being a case of hyping things up. This March was never deemed to be a particularly cold one, certainly in recent weeks and the last month or so. Given the, the the shift in the overall global pattern, not just locally, but global pattern shift during the middle portions of the month where I believe the El Nino started to really take stage. Also, possibly the interaction between the strong El Nino and the solar maximum, that could also be having an impact. And there's other aspects as well that needs to get taken into consideration. But once this El Nino-like setup took over the overall pattern, you can kind of say to yourself, it looks as if things are done and dusted when it comes to cold weather. But certainly the GFS indicates that we open the door to something a lot more uh, active. But we get a break. We have this break now where the block to the north northeast is keeping back Atlantic systems. It's, it's holding it back to the west. And therefore, we get a little bit of a break from this uh, wet winter and the uh, beginning of, of autumn. Um, beginning of autumn but i was doing well there up until now 
uh, the beginning of spring, we've got this very active wet pattern. I think we're going to start to see, uh, you know, the temperatures rising gradually. And also, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see drying and average conditions start to take hold. But the, the warm Atlantic obviously has to get taken into consideration. What influence is that going to have? Is it going to enhance high pressure or is it going to enhance low pressure, enhance rainfall? It could either go either way, if I'm being honest. So we'll wait and see what happens uh, over the next few days. Keep it right here on my YouTube channel. Like, share and subscribe. You know the drill. And I'll hopefully be back again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.